Hello everyone, you're welcome back to Legal Impress. In this video, I'll be talking on surrogacy and I'm sure a lot of you are aware of surrogacy and it is no longer news that a lot of people are opting for surrogacy arrangements with surrogates and due to the fact that it is unregulated in Nigeria, there is high likelihood of fraudulent practices and a lot of intended parents being taken advantage of by the surrogate or the agency. So in this video, I'll be breaking down to you what the concept of surrogate is about and the key things you need to factor before the embryo transfer. So let's start with the definition of surrogacy. Surrogacy is simply an arrangement whereby a woman agrees to carry and deliver child for another woman who is unable to do so herself with the intention that upon delivery of the child, the child will be handed over to the other woman who will now become the legal parent or the legal mother of that child. Now, in surrogacy, the one who carries the child for another is called the surrogate, while the couple who engage the services of a surrogate are usually called the intended parents. There are two major types of surrogacy. We have the traditional surrogacy and we also have the gestational surrogacy. For the traditional surrogacy, it's simply when the surrogate is involved in the conception of the child. This is where there is genetic contribution of the surrogate in the conception of the child, meaning that the surrogate's egg was used with the donor sperm to bring forth the child. Then for gestational surrogacy, this is when the surrogate only acts as a carrier of the child and has no genetic contribution towards the conception of the child. Now, as I stated earlier, there is no law in Nigeria that expressly governs the practice of surrogacy. As a result, you find that some intended parents may be taken advantage of. You find fraudulent practices occurring during the surrogacy arrangement, and you find some agencies also um, defrauding intended parents due to their desire to have their own child. Now, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some key factors you should consider before the embryo transfer. Let's assume that the intended parents they were able to get a very good agency they've spoken to their medical doctor and sought the necessary medical advice due diligence has been carried out as it relates to who the surrogate is before the embryo transfer one key thing needs to be done which is having a surrogacy agreement in place any agency you go to or any fertility clinic that you go to that tells you that you do not need a surrogacy agreement please run like run and abstain from such fertility clinic or agency it is key it is essential because the surrogacy agreement clearly defines the roles the responsibilities the obligations of every party to the agreement so it is very necessary and it is not just necessary for you to have a surrogacy agreement always ensure that your lawyer reviews the agreement before you sign in other jurisdictions irrespective of whatever you do the surrogate is still the legal owner of the child and if the surrogate is married her husband is the father of the child until a parental order is sought but because in nigeria at the moment we do not have any law that expressly regulates the practice of surrogacy it is that agreement that more or less binds both parties so you need to ensure that this agreement is well drafted and you seek the independent legal advice of a lawyer now let's move into the key factors you need to consider the first thing is the parties to the agreement who are the parties to this agreement as i stated earlier 
you have the surrogate and you also have the intended parents but in the event that the surrogate is married it is extremely important that the consent of the husband is sought and obtained and it is also important that you make the husband a party to the agreement in order to avoid further issues in order to avoid claims to the um, paternity of the child also during the attempt to achieve pregnancy it is always advised and stipulated that the surrogate should avoid any form of sexual intercourse if the surrogate is married the husband needs to be aware of this so these are one of the reasons why it is necessary for the husband to be joined as a party to this surrogacy agreement so that whatever the surrogate is doing is aware of it and is also bound by the decision or whatever obligation that both parties have agreed to number two is compensation compensation is not just about i'm paying you the sum of money and that is it for surrogacy agreement it needs to be well defined if not the intended parents may be taking advantage of you need to know exactly how much you're willing to be liable for as it relates to medical fees the amounts or the extent to which you are willing to pay for because if you don't stipulate this the surrogate can decide to walk into any hospital or incur any form of expenses that you did not factor so you have to have an agreed form of compensation how is going to be how it is going to be paid are you going to pay this compensation upon delivery or upon conception or upon when there is the legal handover of the child as yours you need to factor these things and know exactly what you want most times also the intended parent also take care of the legal fees you'd also take care of the medicals as i stated you'd also take care of clothing allowance and some other things that are necessary to ensure that the surrogate is doing well and she's covered number three is parental rights and custody the essence is to be a parent and there is no point for you to enter into a surrogacy agreement and at the end of the day you do not have parental rights and custody over that child you need to know exactly what your rights would be and when your rights commences and when you are able to take over from the surrogate in terms of parental rights and custody sometimes you have to, you also have to factor will i be the one to breastfeed the child upon delivery or it's going to be the surrogate that will take care of the child to a certain age or to a certain extent you need to clarify on these things and never leave room for assumption never leave room for what if whatever factor whatever clauses that you desire you need to speak to your lawyer about it and ensure that it is factored into the agreement and it is fair to both parties number four is liability for medical complication aside from being a surrogate it is common that there are some pregnant women that might have complications during or before or after childbirth so you need to know exactly how you're going to be liable in terms of decision making if it's stillbirth if the surrogate has a miscarriage what happens who is going to be liable who is going to take care of it are we going to have any other attempts you also need to know how many attempts that is okay for you to have with a surrogate how many attempts should we have so you need to consider this also it's really really key so that when issues come up both parties know their obligations and number five is also the location of delivery of the child there are some parents that might want the child to be delivered outside the country there might be a particular hospital that you want the surrogates might prefer a traditional doctor to help her with her delivery you need to clarify and not just assume that when she wants to give birth yes she'll go to the hospital so number six is confidentiality confidentiality is another key factor you don't want a situation where the surrogate goes around spreading or telling people about your private life and that's why for some surrogacy agreements the intended parents do not even want to meet with the surrogate sometimes they like to remain anonymous and the only time they have in fact no connection 
do your thing and just give me the baby while I fulfill whatever obligations on my part and you also fulfill whatever obligations on your part and give me the baby upon delivery some couple want it like that for some couple they want to partake in the story they want to partake in the process see how everything is going and also want to be involved so you need to be clear on confidentiality is the surrogate going to go on social media and start posting pictures of the baby bump and later people are asking her oh i thought you gave birth where is the baby and she says oh no 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 no. i was a surrogate for this parent and i did you need to it's it's highly essential that the agreement is made confidential and also confidentiality in terms of when the child um, grows up you don't want the surrogates coming to knock 30 years down the line or once the child is being delivered every future contact and communication with this child is not going to be possible you also need to agree on this arrangement in the surrogacy agreement Another clause you need to factor in the surrogacy agreement is the death of the intended parents. Obviously, no one prays for any bad thing to happen, but in a surrogacy agreement, you need to cover all the what ifs. So let's assume, for example, that something goes wrong with the intended parent and the surrogate is already about seven to eight months pregnant. What happens? Upon delivery of the child, is the surrogate going to be the legal owner of the child or instead you have like a guardian or someone in place to ensure that the surrogacy agreement is enforced and takes legal ownership of the child after every other conditions have been fulfilled so you also need to factor that in the surrogacy agreement of the outcome or the steps that will be taken in the event something goes wrong with the intended parent. Another key factor you need to consider in surrogacy agreement is the governing law, choice of venue, and the dispute resolution mechanism. You need to agree on this. Trust me, it is normal. Irrespective of who the person is, sometimes some people just breach the agreement. I don't know why, but they just breach the agreement. So you need to prepare ahead. In the event that the surrogate or the intended parents breach the terms of this agreement, what is the governing law? Where is the place we're going to settle or the choice of venue? What alternative dispute mechanism are we going for? Are we just going to go straight to court? Are we going to try and negotiate between parties or are we going for mediation? You need to clarify these things because it would help you and it would assist and aid the speedy process of whatever disputes that both parties have. Now, the clauses I just stated is not exhaustive. There are a lot. This is just some of the key things you should consider before engaging a surrogate or before executing a surrogacy agreement. With this, you're able to think before you get to that stage. You're able to factor what you want and you'd be able to speak to your lawyer about it and decide and discuss on how these key terms should be factored in the agreement. I hope that these few clauses that I explained have enlightened you one way or the other and you know what to do before executing a surrogacy agreement. Please, if you're interested in knowing more about these clauses or what you should do from the legal perspective, feel free to send me a mail or just drop your response at the comment section and I'll definitely respond to you. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. Thanks for watching.